This is the gospel message, and I just pray that you will open your heart and let it change your life. We were fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God to declare his glory and reveal his majesty. The problem is that one of the angels of God wanted to be higher than God himself, and therefore this angel was cast out of heaven, becoming the fallen angel, or as we know him, the devil. One day in the Garden of Eden, there was Adam and Eve, the first humans, and the fallen angel appeared to them in the form of a serpent and tempted them to sin against God, and they did, causing mankind to fall. God was angered and he casted Adam and Eve from the garden and told the serpent that he was going to send one who would crush the serpent's head and the serpent would bruise his heel. You have to understand that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and because of that, we all deserve an eternal separation from God, which is hell. But God loved the world so much that he became man, and that man's name was Jesus Christ. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life by fulfilling all the requirements of the law in order to become the perfect sacrifice for our sins. He was spat on, mocked, and beaten, and people even gambled over his clothes. He was whipped to the point where his flesh was torn from his body and a crown of thorns was crushed into his skull. He was then forced to carry his cross to the site where he would be nailed to it. Jesus then used his last bit of energy after hanging on the cross for several hours to say, It is finished. And then he commended his spirit to the Father. Jesus was then buried. But three days later, he rose from the grave, conquering sin and death. Don't you see? God passed the law that would cause the Jews to sentence his incarnate form to death. The law was the schoolmaster to lead us to Christ and allow us to see our need for a savior. The law was a shadow of good things to come. The promise came before the law. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. This is our Savior. Now, whosoever believes in Jesus Christ as your Savior by trusting in his life, death, burial, and resurrection will be saved. He will take on your sin, and you will take on his imputed righteousness. This is the love of God, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Call out to him today. Confess him as your Lord. When you trust only in the blood of Jesus Christ to be your salvation from sin, you will be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise as a down payment of guarantee of eternal life until the day of deliverance. The Holy Spirit is the seed of God which is planted in you by Jesus Christ through faith in him. This is what allows you to be presented before a holy God as blameless. The Holy Spirit then baptizes you into the body of Christ, making you part of the ecclesia, meaning the church or the called out ones. Your heart will be circumcised and you will be sanctified, meaning you will be set apart from your flesh. We are eternally secure in him because he who begins a good work in us will be faithful to complete it. And daily we will work out our salvation with reverent fear and rejoice and trembling as we conform to the image of Jesus Christ. We become disciples of Jesus and that discipleship journey will look different for everyone. So do not compare yourself to other Christians, but only to Jesus Christ because he is the only standard we strive for. Repent today, that is to turn towards Jesus. Do not let man deceive you into thinking that you must drop all your sins before you come to Jesus. Jesus wants you to come just as you are because he came to call the sinners to repentance, not the righteous. Those who are given to him by God and seek him, he shall in no way cast out. Stop clinging on to the branches of religion and instead come to know the true vine, that is Jesus Christ, because without him, there is no victory, there is no deliverance, and there is no healing. We can do nothing without him. He is our savior from the penalty of sin. He is our savior from the power of sin. And eventually he will be our savior from the presence of sin. He himself took on the penalty of your sin that you would find forgiveness and redemption from your sin today. 
He desires a relationship with you, and heaven is waiting to rejoice when you turn to him. Receive the free gift of salvation today through faith in Jesus Christ, and enter through the narrow gate that leads to eternal life with your heavenly Father. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your grace. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for another day. Blessed be your holy name. We worship and adore you. We bow down. the 10,000 other things we don't even recognize. Blessed be your holy name. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you that you established our lives. We thank you, Lord, that you have set aright our day, that you order our steps, that you have realigned our lives. We thank you, Lord, for your recognition. We thank you, Lord, for your understanding. We thank you, Lord, for your tender mercies. Thank you. When I was broken In spirit and soul There was no one around Who would love me Stumbling in darkness Fear had me bound There was only
Above his name there is no other name. The one who is eternally the same. There is no other name. The first, the last, beginning and the end. He was the king who made the common man his friend. There is no other name. Let every tongue proclaim and sing the name of Jesus. Magnify and praise the name. Of Jesus, no other name but Jesus. There's power in the precious name of Jesus. Jesus, Messiah, King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus. He created all that is with his own hands, and yet the smallest need he understands. There is The one who said, I am the great I am. And then he gave himself the sacrifice for man. There is no other name. Second Corinthians chapter 1 
verse 2 through 7. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast knowing that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so shall you be also of the consolation. Praise the Lord, most high, the most high God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Before we even begin, mic, mic check, can everybody hear me okay? Please let me know there in the chat, anybody but Jordan. I'll receive the mic check from anybody but Jordan. He has disqualified himself. If you listen to the podcast, you know why. Still, still love you, Jordan. <laughs> Just don't trust you with mic checks. Okay. Thank you, Ray Ray. Appreciate you. <laughs> Today is... January 11th, 2023. And, and praise the Lord for another day. We have made it over the hump day of Wednesday and slide it on into Thursday. Thank you, Jesus, for another day. Let me be, begin with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you in the mighty name of King Jesus, Lord, thanking you for another day and another opportunity to be with these, your people, and share with them the insights and things that you've placed on my heart to say, Lord, that I hope that will bless them. As we go through this life on the daily, working out our salvation with fear and trembling before you. Lord, I pray for any of the people who are out here that are infirmed, who are hurting in mind, body, or soul, Lord, that you are more than enough to get them through whatever they are going through, Lord. And yes, and even for those who might even be facing death, for whatever reason, if they know you, they have everything they need. And unlike billions on the earth, they are prepared 
or eternity because they know you. And we thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Undergird them, strengthen them, empower them in their faith if they are being persecuted even unto death. Lord, we pray for them and lift them up. And if it be possible to deliver them, Lord, should they receive that deliverance, we ask for it in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, we thank you and praise you that every day we go from glory to glory as we progress in our faith, growing in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for your provision, your blessing in all the ways, Lord, that we see and even those that we don't recognize. Thank you for your grace upon grace, mercy upon mercy, for your love. And yes, Lord, in matters that need be for your judgment, your chastising, and if necessary, your scourging. We thank you, Lord. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son and is a witness that we are yours, even in correction. And we thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray your blessing, peace, and joy upon the listener. In Jesus' name. How is everyone doing this lovely Wednesday evening on the East Coast? It's starting to get late. On the West Coast, we're just getting started. Let me get a shout out to the people in the chat before I continue. If my tongue and lips don't fail me tonight, I'm going to trip all over. Ray Ray was first. And give a shout out to Blue Bunny, the ice cream lady in the land down under. What is your favorite ice cream, by the way, Blue Bunny? Maria. And and then, let's see. Like I'm... I saw Chow. Did I see Chow? No, I saw Toph. I don't know why I continue to get you two mixed up. I just don't even know. And then, shout out to you, Toph. Mia, thank you for joining me this evening. And everyone else as well. So you guys are having fun in the chat. You know, I don't mind as long as everybody's showing love and being nice. You can talk about whatever. I know it's fun for all you tatters. That love the chat, chat away. Annette, thank you so much for joining me again and everyone else this evening. And did I miss anybody? Not anybody that knows how to give proper mic checks anyway. And yes, Revivalists for Christ. Thank you for joining me, Mr. Salty, otherwise known as Jordan Tyler. Hope, hope everything is going good for you at your job. <laughs> and let's see. I forget anybody. Oh, shout out to mom. She'll be checking this out probably tomorrow. <laughs> you don't. You don't have a favorite. Blue Bunny says she doesn't have a favorite. There's just too many yummy flavors. <laughs> I think I like your style, Maria. <laughs> Why well, pick one when you can have them all, right? <laughs> oh, if I had said that to Jordan, he'd be like, stop calling me fat. I'm like, nobody called you fat. Anyway. <laughs> All right, Mr. Uh, Tyler, since you're still listening and you haven't fallen asleep, I want you to help me out with this. And I wonder if you're going to be amazed by this. Um, let's see. The scripture that I had for last week was, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to mess this up because I have to go out. Okay, there it is. I, I hope I can find my way back. Bear with me. <laughs> Bear with me in the land of the digital world. 1 Peter 3.10. Now, 
I'm trusting Mr. Tyler to keep me honest on this one. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile, which is deceit. Don't trust me. Look it up. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And it just goes on to admonish people to walk right uprightly before the Lord at the beginning of the passage and then all, all the way down here. Now, what was interesting to me, and then I'm going to get back to uh, continuing my testimony about restoration here, but of my health, of my health slowly as we go here. Um, I was looking to see if this phrase was in the Bible anywhere else, good days. And I found it in what people arguably don't call the Bible. In, I guess they argue that this isn't even in the Apocrypha. But I thought it was interesting because we know there's another passage. I think, Jordan, keep me honest here. Mr. Apologist. <laughs> uh, that Enoch is quoted, is it by, is it by Jesus, Jordan? I know you've had several discussions about this with people. So we'll let the apologist apologize. He hates it when I do that. But I found it in the book of Enoch. The exact phrase. Good days. And guess what? Oh, you can't remember, Jordan? That's okay. I think he said he said he can't. So he's still working on the apologist thing. He'll get it right one of these days. It's okay. So, uh, too much fun. Um, Enoch 95, 8. If you go read the whole passage, he, he's talking about the same thing that First Peter 3 is talking about. I was like, what? So, Enoch 95, 8. Woe to you, ye powerful, who with power strike down righteousness. For the day of your destruction shall come, while at the very time many and good days shall be a, shall be the portion of the righteous, even at the period of your judgment. Wow. And then Enoch 101, 7. And when you die, sinners, say concerning you as we die. The righteous die. What profit have they in their works? Behold, like us, they expire in sorrow and in darkness. What advantage have they over us? Henceforward, are we equal? What will be within their grasp? And what before their eyes forever? For behold, they are dead. And never will they again perceive the light. I say unto you, ye sinners, you have been satiated with meat and drink, with human plunder and raping, with sin, with the acquisition of wealth, and with the sight of good days. Have you not marked the righteous, how their end is in peace? For no oppression is found in them. Even to the day of their death, they perish and are as if they were not, while their souls descend in trouble to the receptacle of the dead. But now I swear to you, ye righteous, by the greatness of his splendor and his glory, by his illustrious kingdom and by his majesty, to you I swear that I comprehend this mystery, that I have read the tablet of heaven and have seen the writing of the holy ones and have discovered what is written and impressed on it concerning you. I have seen that all goodness, joy, 
and glory has been prepared for you and been, and been written down for the spirits of them who die eminently righteous and good. To you it shall be given in return for your troubles and your portion of happiness shall far exceed of the living. Wow. <laughs> wow. Does that sound a little bit like I do not reckon that the sufferings of this life should be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us? I got a problem with these people that say that this stuff ain't Bible. I really, really do. Especially when you can find these same precepts in the Bible. <laughs> so anyway, I just thought I'd point that out to you guys for your consideration. Oh, see, thank you, Jordan. I guess he's not asleep. <laughs> he redeemed himself. He pulled it out the fire. First Peter 3 is about Enoch. And I was making that case a couple of months back. Isn't that great? That's awesome. The apologists apologized correctly. <laughs> uh, I didn't know that you had referenced that particular passage when you were talking about that. Yes. Yes, Jude is also. I did hear. <laughs> um, I don't think it would be blind. I think it would be deaf. But he, he said, I also said it, it was quoted in Jude, if you weren't blind. <laughs> There's the saltiness. Definitely you need some sleep, I think. But yes, I remember you on one of your podcasts talking about either on mine or someone else's. I just don't remember where. Uh, that it was in Jude that Enoch is referenced in a part of Jude. And, then, and we've been pointing out that if these New Testament books are referencing the Apocrypha, then why isn't it received as Bible? If you're talking about Jordan being a feisty little thing, I, I don't know. Um, Jesus, Jesus, I'm going to. It's Jesus, what? Christ, my king. Okay. Um, if you're talking about Jordan, he's not little. He's 6'4". Just saying. If that was about Jordan. I don't <laughs> so, he's a big feisty thing. Where was I? Where was I? Oh, yes. So, I was talking about, you know, where is that scripture at? Well, you know, in the Old Covenant, the Lord promises a restoration for people. To restore what the devil stole. And how he restored to joy, the joy of David's salvation. In Psalms, I think it's 51. And then he talks about restoring the, the years that the locusts have eaten. In Joel 2. Praise the Lord. You know how he restored Job and blessed him even more than what had been taken by the devil. And sometimes, woo, when you're going through, holding on to the remembrance, remember like a the body being re uh, if you had remembers putting back on <laughs> remembrance of these things so that you can be strengthened and encouraged because God is no respecter of persons. And if he did it for them, he can do it for you. And this is what I say. You'll see this thing throughout the scripture about crying out to the Lord in your affliction. 
and in your suffering and in your pain. Like I posted with that in Psalm 50, 15 in the Septuagint. And call upon me in the day of affliction, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Pause. Woo, thank you, Jesus. And yes, he will do it and can do it. Do you believe he can do it? Do you believe he's able? Because he is indeed able. But we got to do what he said to do. And I was talking about some of the things that I discovered in my battle and my fight along the way. And one of which was fasting. And I was doing a lot of fasting. Um, what I would call more block fasting, like periods of time, like two or three days, three or four days. And it did help. I'm sure it did help. I, you know, I'm not going to say that it didn't help, even though I didn't feel some of the changes I'm feeling now. Um, particularly concerning my mood and arguably mental state, although Jordan might dispute that when it comes to memory, but I'm still working on that one. <laughs> I think I was telling Jordan, I said, pain does affect your memory. It does distract you and uh, I think sometimes when people don't know you're in pain because they don't go around complaining about it so they'll say stuff and they think I'm not paying attention like I'm just like totally self-absorbed and ignoring them I'm like going I'm sorry I didn't hear you because I'm dealing with pain I didn't tell them that I was in pain at that moment and so you know if you don't communicate with people then they'll think <laughs> you're you're being rude or you're not paying attention and I was like, no, sweetie, I was paying attention, but I had some pain issues. So that can make you lose focus on what somebody's saying from time to time. And you, you get these gaps in your memory on stuff. <laughs> People think you're not paying attention, which Mr. Salty accuses me of quite frequently. But I found that doing daily fasting and Anna, the prophetess mentioned in the scripture where the Bible talks about how when she was waiting to see Jesus in the temple, baby Jesus, they bring in the baby in to be circumcised. And Simeon was looking and Anna, the prophetess was looking and the Bible says she did daily fastings, plural. And made me think, you know, I had never thought about that before, that you could fast multiple times a day. Doesn't have to be just one long continuous fast you could break it up but i started thinking about knew about knew about inter what they call intermittent fasting and i said you know i've tried everything but intermittent dry fasting as i was doing some block dry fasting but i haven't done the intermittent dry fasting so instead of having a fast from say 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. which is a 12-hour fast and having hydration I said let me try a dry fast for that long or even longer if I'm feeling good you know I, some, some days I'm going like 16 hours dry completely dry no food no drink and for the first I say Two weeks, maybe. I start about 8 p.m. And, and go till about 8 a.m. on average. I, I make sure I get at least my 12. But if I don't, because something went awry in my day, I don't stress over it. It's my fast. I can do it the way I want. I don't put myself under any extra burden or pressure. But let me give you an example. I was doing it for about three weeks before Christmas. And I started to notice that my mood was improving. This heaviness that I was talking about that I had on me was lifting. 
So, so of course, that was motivation to continue. And come family day, which was on Christmas, this past Christmas, um, let's see, I did my fast the night before, so it was okay to break break it that morning. I broke it like kind of late in the afternoon, but that night on the way home, because, you know, mom always taught us, you don't go to somebody's house and fill up, right? So so even though it was my sister's home and I could have ate to my heart's content, I just don't, I don't do it, right? And she was very gracious. She knew I was, the way that I eat now, it's not a diet. It's not a crash diet. It's the way that I eat, which is low carb primarily. Um, she had all these different low carb foods, but, you know, there were other stuff there too. So it's funny because my sister-in-law fixed me a plate and brought it to me. And they had ooh, two of my faves on there now because I could be straight up carbaholic. <laughs> there, would be, there would be no dispute. The heavyweight champion of carbs would be right here. <laughs> so, um, But she had, I think it was like German style potato salad and mac and cheese, all of which she made herself. And then... They, uh, her husband had cooked a roast. It was delicious. And I think it was some green beans. So the green beans and the roast I could have most assuredly for low carb. But my sister-in-law kind of packed my, packed my plate with mac and cheese and some potato salad too. Way more than I should even taste, right? So I just took like a spoonful of each. Oh, and then my sister-in-law, her mother showed her how to make these sweet rolls that are like, TDF, right? <laughs> we shouldn't die for anything like that, but they taste so good. So I had like a pinch of that, a spoonful of mac and cheese, and a spoonful, I'm talking about just a teaspoon of the potatoes. And that was it. And for me, I mean, that would have almost been impossible <laughs> like a year ago. I would have been like, no, this plate's fine. I'll just blow this out tonight and try to restart tomorrow. The only problem is if you know anything about low carb you'll hear people say i'm gonna have a cheat day the problem is with low carb if you have a cheat day it can take you three to five maybe even seven days depending on your metabolism to get back into what's known as ketosis which is fat burning and i'm like i don't want to burn <laughs> excuse the raspberries there i don't want to waste five to seven days just for a few extra carbs one day i'm like nope i'm not doing it so on the way home, I was kind of hungry after the family day. We had a, really had a blast. We had a lot of fun, played family game, had a good time. And on the way home, I sometimes if I'm hungry, I'll stop and get like a lettuce wrap burger. So I'm, you know, I am the wimpy of cheeseburgers. Wimpy, <laughs> wimpy went with hamburgers, right? I would gladly, uh, uh, Jordan, that's from a Popeye cartoon. I know you probably don't know about stuff like that. So I Wimpy would say, I would gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. Well, Lisa would say, I would gladly pay you Tuesday or any day for a cheeseburger today. <laughs> so I love cheeseburgers. I don't have them that often, maybe a couple of times a week if I really want them, but at least twice a month, let's say I'll have cheeseburgers. And, you know, I'm doing them low carb style. And some of these breads that they have for low carb are getting a little bit better, a little more tasty, but you can also make your own at home and stuff if you really want some uh, bread on there. But anyway, uh, and I had, I bought two of them. And when I got home, I said, no, nah, I don't want to. I'll save the other one for tomorrow, but I'll, I'll eat this one now. And it's like 11 o'clock. I couldn't believe I made it home that early. Usually I don't get home till like 1, 2 a.m. And because there's always something wrong with the freeway out here in the middle of the night, the freeway will be jacked. But that night it was wide open. I was like, thank you, Lord. Got home at about 11 and got comfortable, ate my cheeseburger, did my rehydration, started my fast at like midnight. So I'm thinking I'll go to noon the next day. I was thinking my 12 hours, you know, I don't worry about it. And, <laughs> uh, about I didn't communicate that to my aunt whom I live with and she brought me a cup of coffee about 9 30 in the morning 
was thinking, thinking, do I want to start something here? Because if, if I say I don't want the copy right now, that could go the wrong way. <laughs> so I said, I'm just going to take the coffee. She's in the kitchen cooking breakfast too. Because I didn't text her and say, I'm going to eat late today. I'm going to start late today. So I said, you know what? I'm not going to try it. <laughs> so I said, I'm just going to have the coffee and I'm going to eat. And I'm not going to worry about it. And then I restarted my fast again that night about 8 p.m. So I only got maybe nine and a half hours that morning. But see, this is what I'm saying. It's like I'm not stressing about anything. And that was the one time in the last, what is this now? We're two, almost two weeks into January. So I've been doing this for about five weeks now. 12-hour dry fast every single day. No weekends off every single day. And it has helped me tremendously feel better. So I wanted to let you guys know about that. So for those of you who are able-bodied, who are interested, who think you want to try it, please do your own research Research, excuse me, first. And uh, there's some really good channels that talk about dry fasting. Thomas D. Lauer is one of them. Another is Dr. Mindy Pels, P-E-L-Z. Um, I don't think, I know Fledge Fitness talks about intermittent fasting, but I don't think he's big on dry fasting. I don't know. Maybe he's changed his position since the last few videos I watched, but he has some really good information on fasting. I like these kind of people because they actually will read the studies and then share the information with you. And I'm sure I'm forgetting a host of other channels right now, but, um, those will get you started and point in the right direction. Cause usually when you start clicking on anything about the subject, you know how y'all find other stuff other channels that carry the information I've pointed to um, I'll put some books and links in the description tonight after the podcast on dry fast and Jordan and I talked about this uh, video on my channel and also on his channel about fasting how to fast as Christian with all those links and everything in there so you know I can't say enough about it guys if you're struggling with some health issues um, do your research about uh fasting and whether or not there's any contraindications concerning your particular health issue but the list the short is a short list of of things where uh dry fasting would not be advisable i wish i could think about this doctor he's a he is actually a heart doctor and he talked about the, there was only one uh person that he would not recommend fasting for and that was a person with a particular heart condition that had uh, like fluid problems uh, with excessive fluid and stuff. And he mentioned, and I'll put that, I'll find that video and I'll put that in a link in the description tonight of the podcast too, because that was the only condition he even said that he would recommend for somebody not to fast. That's why I said it's a very, very short list. So please do your own due diligence. I, I have in my heart for you exactly what the scripture says when it says, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. And I truly mean that. Uh, it, it stinks to be sick. It stinks to be going through. It stinks to be in pain. It stinks to have your, your mental clarity, you know, being challenged. And it definitely stinks to have any kind of heaviness on you and or depression. So, I, I want you to be well and I want you to flourish and sur not only survive, but thrive. Praise the Lord by the power of Christ. He, the Lord is the one that created fasting. It's his thing. He knew what he was doing. If you saw in my community section, I posted a video by a gentleman named Butter. Well, that's not his name. I'm sorry. He did a video called, and it's, I guess, kind of like his moniker, Butter Bob Briggs. Okay. Um, but he talked about, uh, you know, how even in uh, with fasting, how, how this helped, how the body goes into this mode of, of cleansing itself. And it's a really good video. If you guys get a chance to check it out, check it out. It's in my community section. But there is real science behind fasting. And he talked about how a 150 roughly 154 or 55 pound person could actually fast with there's enough fat on their body 
an otherwise healthy person to last them three months. So go listen to it. I mean, he had the science behind it and explained it. And I think it was like two to three months. Let's say two to three months in there. So, you know, they, they try to make us all panic. They go, oh, you can't live. What is it? The rule of three, three minutes without air. Well, the Navy SEALs proved that wrong. Some of them hold their breath for several minutes longer than that. And then <laughs> they say uh, three days without water. Well, that's a lie. We know Moses went 40 days and 40 nights without water. And if you don't, don't believe me, go look. There's regular, ordinary folk trying to drive fast and for the first time went 10 and 15 days <laughs> without water or food. And then there's uh, the three weeks without food. And we know that's not true because in the Guinness Book of World Records, there's a, man, there's a man that holds the record. I don't remember if it's 380. I don't remember if it's two, five or seven. I just don't remember. Over 380 days. Uh, fasting. So, <laughs> yeah, they got a problem with those figures. So do your own due diligence. Find out the health benefits of fasting. I know that dry fasting I still haven't found out the reason why, but it's supposedly not recommended for people over 70. So just keep that in mind and do your own research on that. But there's all different kinds of fasting that one can do and intermittent fasting, basically just going to bed, right? And then skipping breakfast in the morning is fasting because the first meal of the day is actually called breakfast, break fast. So, you know, I just wanted to encourage you guys. I wanted to see you guys do well. And I would feel remiss if I didn't tell you about this improvement and what my experience was in just the last five weeks. And of course, this is simply anecdotal information. You know, the thing the Bible would call testimony. So <laughs> I hope that that benefits you and helps you. This Saturday night, Mr. Tyler, what did you text me? I don't even remember what you said. <laughs> Hold on a second, y'all. He's going to be mad at me. I don't remember what he texted me about his topic for Saturday night. It's about some horror house or something. Hold on. Uh Is that McCammy or McCamey? I don't even know. Manor. I think it's supposed to be some horror house. And they actually, people have been terribly hurt. I don't know if anybody's ever died. Jordan has a suspicion that if they probably covered, probably covered it up. Where they beat people up. And they, I guess there's so much money that you can win if you can make it through there. We were talking about how demonic it was. I couldn't even stand to see. The videos, I couldn't even watch one video more than like two minutes. I couldn't take it. I was like, oh, no, this is terrible. This is this is awful. So he wants to talk about that Saturday. And I'm going to talk about yay, Kanye West and the Martha Stewart effect. <laughs> so you guys go on to tune in for that this Saturday. And we'll have some more trivia. And I think I'm going to let Jordan give out the prizes this time. We'll see. Ray Ray is going to be doing the trivia. So we're going to find out how good she is at it. And, oh, Ray Ray, I'm going to send you the link. So if you want, now if you want to, you can actually come on and we'll let you ask those trivia questions so we can have a little fun. If you like. If if not, that's okay. I know some people don't like to uh, like come on podcasts and stuff. And they get real nervous. So it's totally up to you. No pressure. However you want to do it. I forgot to mention that to you in my email. And then Ben Gorilla Christian Dude. If you uh, listen to this podcast, I haven't forgot you. I know you won last week's trivia. Uh, I haven't gotten the new prizes yet. So as soon as I do, I'll get that out to you. So, okay, guys, I think that's going to do it for tonight. Because on the East Coast, you guys are already fading. You got to get up for work early in the morning, most of you. And... I'm trying to hustle the call. 
mom's before she turns in for the evening and goes to sleep. So I'm going to close out. I think I'm going to play one more. Uh, yeah, one more song in the closing and then, or one more thing in the closing and then we're done. But I thank you for joining me. I hope it was a blessing to you. And I look forward to seeing you guys, figuratively speaking, on Late Night with Lisa and Friends this Saturday night at roughly 8 p.m. If all goes well with the equipment, I love you and God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Good night. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly, Seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity.